thank you so much for joining me on this amazing build. I'm really grateful that you uh, came along and helped me build this just by watching my videos. It, it's it's kind of a dream came true. This is this is an awesome snowmobile. It's very lightweight. We're going to have a look at how much it weighs at the end of the video. But meanwhile, I have some things I need to talk about that are really important in my opinion, such as how much did it cost me to, to build this, like electronics, how did it cost, and uh, how I was able to build a machine that has this kind of weight, like what are we looking at? So first thing first, let's talk about what electronics I choose for something like this. Let's use the controller here. So this is a Spectrum DX5 rugged. The only reason I picked this thing is because I have some Chagas controllers, I have some Fly Sky controllers, I have a bunch of controllers, but my favorite one by far are Spectrum. So when I saw that they came out with something like this, I was like, man, this is awesome. It's waterproof. Uh, you can, like, there's a, a lot of bumpers around this, so you can bash it and drop it and something. It's very tough. And uh, I'm not going to test it, but I'm going to take their word for it. And uh, even take some time to make a custom label for this. So why not? So I pick up that radio and it doesn't come with the receiver from stock, which is perfect because what kind of kick started this project was the servo itself. I saw on the, on the RC car action magazine, I saw a picture of that thing. I was like, man, that's brilliant. Why does nobody else makes a controller, uh, a servo with this uh, receiver built into it? This is an awesome idea. It saves weight. Uh, it's all like less messy with wires inside, so it's a great idea. So I was like, I need one of these, and it doesn't come with a radio uh, receiver. So I was like, that's a perfect combo for both of these. The second thing is, first, I wanted to have a very like a kind of medium entry level uh, system. So this is what I had planned to use for for this machine. It's a Mamba X ESC, which is one of the greatest ESCs you can have. And uh, it's paired with a kind of a crawler motor. So it's a smaller size motor compared to something else. So I figured that would be something great to use for this because it's lightweight. And then I kind of figured out that if I really want to go lightweight, this is not going to cut it. The ESC weighs above 100 grams. So it's, uh, it's very lightweight, but at the same time, it's not the lightest I can get. So I started to have a look at what the lightest motor would be, what the, the lightest ESCs, and uh, I really narrowed it to a couple units. So for motors, there was the X-Factor motor. That was a great option, but it was a bit heavier than the motor I choose. But apparently it's a great motor and uh, it would be a lot easier to get your, hand on this, your hands on that motor compared to what I took. There was also a I think it's a SLC motor. It's kind of a odd shape, but it was very difficult to get my hands on it. I'm gonna put the list of motors I uh, I wanted to use, and the reason why I choose that one is because first of all it was the lightest at 131 grams, so it's a it's super lightweight. I mean the standard motor yet usually like from Castle Creation they're around 180 grams or 190. You can even go to 200. So. That's a very lightweight motor for the size it has. So that's why I went with this. Now for the ESC, uh, I had four different options. Uh, Spectrum now has some ESCs they offer, which has some uh, telemetry built in. So it's a great op opportunity for someone that wants to learn how the electronics works. And it's very simple to, to build it and make it all work. It's a bit more expensive, but again, you pay for innovations and stuff like that. But it has a lower power output to what I picked. So there was three uh, ESCs I could have chosen. The one I took was the a Fleeta version 2 something. Let me take my notes here. All right, so the, the two other options I had was a Tekken ESC and a Phantom ESC. So I don't know the complete name of them, but basically the Tekken was the lightest one by far, uh, about four grams. <laughs> So it weighed about 40 grams. The one I took was 43.8 grams. That's according to manufacturers and all that. But these are the weights. And there's well, there was also the Phantom at 48 grams. These three, you see, I really took a long time to figure out which one I was going to take. And upon reflection, maybe I should have gone for 
the, the Tekin brand for two reasons. First of all, it's a very known brand, so a lot of people use it and it's a renowned name. But the reason why I didn't take it was because of the price. It was something like $50 US above what the other ESCs were. So I figured I would not go for it. But at the same time, I kind of regret it because um, I don't have the telemetry built in for this, like uh, data logging and stuff like that. And also it seems like the fleet has seems to be getting quite warm inside just by idling. So we're going to have to check and see how it does in the snow. But that's the reason why I took it is because the price was good and it had most of the, the features that the other ESC had for a great price. And there was also the programming board I had to take to program the like going forward, backwards and power output and stuff like that. So that's why I went with the Fleeta. Now, the battery is something I wanted to talk about because what you saw in the build of this machine was a 3S3300 mAh, which is what I'm going to run some of the time, but I had a specific weight in mind and I didn't want to go above that weight if possible. And I was really close at the end, so I figured let's go with a 22 mAh, so 2200 mAh. And uh, as you can see, I, I took as much weight as possible, shortened the, the cable, took the plastic off of it, like the protective plastic. It's still going to be plenty strong, but like saving weight between this and this, you have about 100 grams. So you see how far I was going in the end. Headlights, there's standard headlights and the taillights as well. I could have saved a bit of weight just by not having headlights and taillights, but I don't want to cut too many corners. I still want a lot of of uh, capabilities in the machine and I don't want to save weight to the point where it's either brittle or take functions away so this is like the best of both worlds it's light it's nimble it's quick it's super lightweight and I can't wait to test it I talked about the weight this is the third time I'm making this snowmobile the first time I kind of went back and just like let's start again and I did that twice I started over again two times because as I went along I, I saw the, the weight go down and then go down again and I knew there was a, a little bit more space I could squeeze out of the weight of that machine like the infill at some places like the, the, the front like uh, headlight sections uh, it's it has zero percent infill so which that, that means it's just a shell and where there's overhangs inside the parts, that's the only section I put some support inside the part. Otherwise it's empty. So I can start all over again on that machine and make it, I don't know, 50 grams lighter. But at that point, it's kind of pointless. I mean, it's very lightweight as it is. And uh, for 50 grams, it's not worth starting all over again. My weight limit was a certain number and I didn't want to go about that. So I did some things posts of what you see like after the videos to save even more weight out of this. One of these things is that the drive shaft that goes across the track and gives power from the transmission to the track, that shaft got replaced with a carbon fiber shaft. I have no idea if it's going to work because I had to drill through it to put a screw to make it like all locked up. But is it going to last? I don't know. So I can't like sell a machine for something that hasn't been tested. So that's why I'm testing stuff on, on my personal machines. So it has a carbon fiber front, a drive shaft, and it also has a carbon fiber tensioning system, which replaces a uh, stainless steel rod about that long from for carbon fiber. So I saved like 50 grams just for that part. And it's arguably a lot stronger and won't bend. So it's pretty insane. But at the same time, once these things were done and I needed to save like another 50 grams or 60 grams, it got really difficult really quickly. I even went as far as to make it a short tunnel version. As you can see, the tunnel ends right past a bit of the middle of the wheel. So it's a short tunnel. Or usually it goes pretty much in line with the bag. So I took about 20 millimeter long out of the tunnel. It doesn't interfere with the look or anything. It's just a bit shorter, so. I mean, I saved maybe 15 grams out of something like this, so it's worth it at the end. I even ordered some of these uh, motor cooling fan from Intigy, and the plan was to weight both of these and see how much weight I could save by having one over the other. And, uh, you know, there was a small difference, but the reason I didn't use these 
is because the fan is so weak that you wouldn't even be able to feel the wind. So I was like, if if I'm not going to see any advantage, why would I put like 20 more grams of weight in something that doesn't like is not going to do a difference. The motor needs to be cool because the motor plate is made of plastic here to save some weight. So it doesn't act like a heat sink. And if it gets really, really hot, it can melt the motor mount. I've seen it happen on the RMK. It has never happened on one of these machines, but I don't want it to happen. And since this has a plastic motor mount, I really need to cool that thing. After some light testing during like bench testing, I figured, man, the motor gets super hot. So let's, let's put a fan on it anyways. And these didn't do it. So that's why, that's why I went with blower style fan that blows directly air on the motor. So even though this is a lot, a lot, this is like five grams heavier than something like this. The only difference is instead of pulling the air through the top, it pulls the air from the outside and pushes it on the, onto the motor. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a big difference because the airflow of a fan like this is a lot more than something like that. TPU, which is the flexible filament you see me using for like uh, handlebars and stuff like that. TPU is heavier per size, uh, per volume than PLA, which is what most of the body is. So I made PLA A-arms and uh, steering, but I dropped the floor a lot. So as you can see, it's, it's crackling, but it won't break. That's because it's kind of a lot of very small strings instead of being one solid part that would snap. It's a, it's kind of a electrical cable, which has a single strand in it. It's very difficult to bend, but I want a cable that has a lot of very small wires inside of it, but a lot of them is going to be very flexible. So it's kind of the same thing. They're not all bounded together. They're kind of uh, just connected in a weird way. It's hard to explain, but I hope you get the idea. There's also a lot of things you saw going in the tunnel, like there's some squares inside the tunnel to just shave some weight, but you don't see it unless I show you what I did. It, you won't be able to see it, but at the same time, it's not going to cause any problem to the snowmobile itself. It doesn't take anything from the strength of it. There's so much more stuff I could talk about, but I don't think it's really worth me spending like another 15 minutes talking about that machine. You've, you've seen how it's built. There's something that has changed. But one thing I really wanted to let you know is that this machine as of now, I don't want to sell the files for this. There's two reasons for this. One of them is I spent over 3,500 hours making the files for something like this and testing is not even included in that time. So I, w I put a lot of time in something like this just to, I don't know, just show you what it is. And I am going to try to sell some unit to some people, but I can't sell like 200 units and at the same time, I don't want to like let the files go because that would just like if somebody would just take these files and start printing snowmobile, apart from the material itself, it's, it's very easy. So I made it easy for myself to print these machine, like how they're laid and all that, but it's not worth it. It's not worth my time just taking these files and just either selling them or just making them free. It's not worth it for me. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm not going to share these files with people unless you buy a snowmobile and you break a ski or something that's very simple. I can share just the ski file so you can print it at home or something like that. But you know, my opinion might change as time goes and maybe make different machines. Maybe in five years from now, I'll just go like, whatever, take these snowmobiles. I really put a lot of time in these things and it would be a shame for me to just let it all go. All right, now it's time for the cost breakdown. So we'll start with the transmitter. These prices that I'm going to give you are Canadian dollars. And at the end, I'll do a conversion for US. So at least you'll have a baseline of how much it, it's cost. Let's start with the transmitter. I paid $260 plus tax for this transmitter. So we'll say 300 for, for round number. Uh, the servo is $189. It's a lot more expensive than the servos I usually use. But again, this is a dream build. So what is the best thing? What's the best snowmobile I can do if money is not a problem? This is this. So $189 plus tax is about $217. And there's also $30 shipping from for all these 
quick part I'm going to mention. If there's extra cost, I'll say it. Uh, now, LiPo battery. This battery is $55 plus tax, it's about $63. This one is a bit cheaper. It's around $43, so with taxes, it's $50. If I would have included them, uh, which I don't, but if I wanted to, uh, I'll put a price right here. I don't know what it is. Now the ESC and programming card. Uh, programming card is kind of a necessity because sometimes you need to flip the motor rotation or something like that and you need program like low voltage setup and it really goes a long way if you were programming card. So the ESC itself is $225 plus tax, so about uh, with the programming card, programming card is about forty dollars. So these two combined with tax shipped is about three hundred and twenty-two dollars. Now the motor is kind of an oddball because uh, nobody had one either in Canada or US, so I had to pick it up from China. So prices scaled up, and then you had duties and all the kind of weird stuff. The motor is about ninety-nine dollar US plus tax plus shipping plus duty plus all that is one hundred ninety-five dollars shipped to my home. So that's pretty expensive for just a small motor. The fan was about $25 with tax for uh, two fans, so I spare ones if I need to. Uh, as a comparison, these little fan uh, heat sinks are about uh, $40 plus shipping, but I didn't use them, so I don't include this. So that brings us to a total of $1,202 Canadian or $912. $112 US so just for the electronics and it doesn't include the headlights and taillights that's pretty expensive a lot of RC people have is less expensive than something like this so all that figured out it's quite an expensive machine plus if you factor I need some carbon fibers and shocks and rod and plastic even if it's just a couple of kilograms it's still a lot of plastic to print and you need some different colors and it, re it gets expensive really quick especially if you're designing it so i hope you like the video i normally don't do a cost breakdown and stuff like that but i really wanted to like show you what i took for a machine like this because i see a lot of bills online of people just putting that motor with that esc and that controller but they don't explain why people use these so i really want to go through this with with that machine and uh the reasoning and why I picked that one over that one and I don't want to just show you I want to explain to you why I picked that up so that being said I hope you stick around to see what the second machine is going to be it's pretty pretty insane so stick around so you see that thanks for watching so what do you say we go for a wait then I know you've been waiting for this for a long time so let's do this just how deep you would dig if you could bury me I'd claw my way back through hell to bring you to your knees I wanna see your face as you watch your world